In this one, I'm going to guide you through the best way I've found to level a Marauder with the goal of getting to maps as quickly as possible. The Marauder is probably the hardest character to level fast, it has very few free skill gems to choose from, and no movement skill available immediately upon reaching level 4. After killing Hillock, we're going to grab Ground Slam from Tarkley. And whilst you're talking to Tarkley, don't forget to pick up Red 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 or Red Red Green Links, along with Runner's Boots. Once you've got all that you can, straight out onto the coast, run left to right grabbing the waypoint as we enter the Mud Flats. Loop the three rowers nests, killing the rowers as you go so they don't overpower you. Get to the edge of the arena and exit to the submerged passage. Take the waypoint back to the coast and head into the tidal islands, head down the left hand side and kill Hell Relic. Grab the medicine chest and the portal scroll and log out. Back in town now, grab the ancestral protector and steal skin from Tarkley. Head to Nessa and get the quicksilver flask and chance to bleed from the medicine chest quest. Unless you've been lucky enough to get a three red by now, then we're going to swap Ruthless out for chance to bleed. Our two link to be upgraded to a three link as soon as you get three reds is Ground Slam, Chance to Bleed, and then Ruthless. Now we're going to buy War Banner and Dash from Nessa and head to the Submerged Passage. Once you get to the bridge stroke stairs thing, drop a portal and head out to the ledge. Run through the ledge to the climb and then to the lower prison. Here we're going to grab the waypoint back to town. Your tree should now look like this. Port straight from town to the Submerged Passage, head downwards to find the flooded depths. In the unlucky event you got the tile set where this isn't down, then you need to go up. Find and destroy the Dweller of the Deep. Remember to pick up blue and yellow items to vendor for currency shards. Log out and back to town. Over to Nessa now and grab Life Tap. Get the skill book from Tarkley. Our next skill point should be Versatility. We can now use Dash because we have enough dexterity. Take the waypoint to the lower prison and find the entrance to the upper prison. Now find the entrance to the Warden's Quarters. Drop your totems, avoid him embracing or slamming you and pound him until dead. Grab loot and log. Grab Leap Slam from Tarkley and link to Life Tap. You can now drop Dash. Life Tap makes Leap Slam use our life instead of mana, and as soon as we get a lot of regen, this will feel really good. If you have the currency, grab Faster Attacks as well. Our movement skill links will be Leap Slam, Life Tap, and Faster Attacks. If you happen to have an Iron Ring, buy a cheap blue gem and sell it with the ring to a vendor for a Cold Resistance Ring. This will be good for the end of Act Boss. Now we're going to buy Precision, Vitality and Maim from Nessa. Link Maim to Ancestral Protector and activate the auras as soon as you hit level 10. When our totem hits an enemy, it will maim them. This causes them to take 10% increased damage, which acts as a 10% more multiplier to our damage. On the skill tree, head for Heart of the Warrior for that juicy life. Head to Prisoner's Gate and find the side of the room with the cliffs. Run down that side until you find the offshoot and follow it to the ship graveyard. In here we want to find the overturned ship and enter the cave beneath it. Get the all flame and exit. Head to the Cavern of Wrath and port back to the ship graveyard. Find and kill Fairgraves. He's normally just up from or to the right of the waypoint. Log out back to town and pick up Sunder from Nessa. As soon as you meet the level requirement, we can drop Ground Slam. Our new offensive three link will be Sunder, Chance to Bleed, and Ruthless. Leveling is about to feel a whole lot better. Grab the skill book from Bestel for killing Fairgraves, find and kill Mavale, and then exit to the Southern Forest. Follow the wall up into the active town. Head out of the forest encampment to the right into the old fields. Run through following the path into the crossroads. Follow the path to the waypoint and head upwards. Enter the Chamber of Sin and find the centre of the maze. Grab the waypoint and head in the direction of the waypoint. This will take you to a staircase. Head down to the Chamber of Sin level 2, find the offshoot and follow it to kill Fidelitas. Hit the strange device and grab the Baleful Gem and log. Talk to Groost and grab Herald of Ash. We're going to swap War Banner for it. Head to Yina and buy Blood Rage. Exit town to the left. Follow the road through the riverways into the western forest, grab the waypoint on the way. Follow the path to the bottom of this area, grabbing the waypoint and noting the side of the road it's on. Kill Captain Arteri at the camp and place the seal he drops into the thematic seal. There'll be a skill book waiting with Bestel for doing this. Whichever side of the road the waypoint was on, head up the opposite side of the arena. You will eventually find the entrance to the Weaver's Chamber. Head in and find the arena. Hit the Weaver until you finish her. Pick up Malagaro's Spike, by this point we should have headed down the tree to here and picked up Martial Experience. This will give us Life Leech and a ton of extra damage. After this we'll be picking up the Mastery that gives us 40% increased damage with hits against rare and unique enemies. Log out to town, once here we're going to pick up melee physical damage as a quest reward from Silk. Our main 3 link will be Sunder, melee fizz and chance to bleed. Now we will be using Ruthless later so don't throw it away. You can actually stick Ruthless to a weapon in your weapon swap and it will continue to level as you do so it's at the right level when you put it back on. We're now going to kill the two bandits, Kraytlin in the Broken Bridge and Oak in the Wetlands. If we don't have leveling gear or good resist then we're going to help Alira for the mana regen, resist and crit. 
we will be rolling this off once we get to maps and fix our resists. If you're happy with your resists, then you can go for the two skill points if you wish. As with all melee characters, keeping your weapon upgraded is essential for quick and smooth levelling. Check with the vendors in town frequently for upgrades. Remember the vendor recipe for the physical roll. This is a Rustic Sash, either Magic or Rare, a Blacksmith Whetstone and a Weapon. And then, if we have a spare Orb of Augmentation, we're going to put an extra roll on that item and hope it's a good one. You'll want to repeat this throughout the whole levelling process to keep your weapon in tip-top shape. Nothing changes now to Act 3, so go and kill the Val Overlord and then head there. Do not forget to talk to Clarissa on the way, if you do you'll have to come back to pick her up to finish the questline. From this point on, skill gem link changes become far less frequent. For this reason, I won't be guiding you through the levelling process to the same level of detail I have so far. Instead, I'll be focusing on what gems and where and when to get them. If you are unfamiliar with the acts and want some more guidance, I have guides for each. I'll link the playlist in the description. Once you've killed Piety in the crematorium, get the Determination gem from Maramoa. Remove Vitality and Herald of Ash and activate Determination. Get the Sewer Key from Clarissa and while you're at it, buy Pride. We won't be using Pride for quite a while, so just socket it to level. Once we get Art of the Gladiator on the tree, armor no longer slows us down, so we can now buy and equip a chest piece if you haven't already. Next, we'll be heading for Champion of the Cause and the Reservation Efficiency after it. Once we've got this, we can transition to Pride. Take out all your auras except for Determination and Pride, and proceed onwards. From this point on, mana will become a little tight, so you will have to use your mana flask far more often than we have been so far. After killing Gravisius and then Piety in the Lunaris Temple, log and get Ancestral Warchief from Maramoa. Depending on whether you like the attack speed bonus from Protector or the melee damage from Warchief, choose which one you want to use, remembering to always link it to main. Just before killing Dominus, I was lucky enough to drop my first Fall Link helmet. I then switched to Sunder, Chance to Bleed, Melee Fizz and Ruthless. If you can, do remember to upgrade your axe before the fight. Also, pick up Enduring Cry from Nessa in Act 1 to help us cope with Dominus's bleed. Once he's down, continue levelling until you get to the Crystal Veins waypoint in Act 4. Now head back to town and get the skill book for freeing Deshret. We're now going to head to the normal lab and complete the labyrinth. As soon as you get to the end, I will talk you through each of the ascendancies that is best for running fast. Ok, the first ascendancy is Juggernaut. This is possibly the most tanky ascendancy in the game. If you're levelling a slow two-handed heavy hitter, I suggest going Undeniable first, as this will give you attack speed and chance to hit, which will boost your levelling speed no end. If you're going Spellcaster or something more nimble, then I suggest building Unstoppable. This will vastly increase your movement speed and prevent almost anything in the game from slowing you down. The Berserker. This one's all about rage and speed, and in that vein, my top pick for running fast in the early game has to be Crave the Slaughter. This gives you fast rage generation, which will massively increase the speed at which you get rage, and therefore the speeds that you attack, cast or move. And last but not least, the Chieftain. This is the best Marauder Ascendancy pick if you're going Totems or high damage fire builds. There is nothing on this Ascendancy that will really speed up levelling generically, so follow your build guide. Now this guide is all about levelling fast in the early game, it is not an end game build guide. That said, I have levelled a Bone Shatter Juggernaut this league using this method. And within a couple of days of this video, I'll have released a video on how to continue from this one to level into that build. So if you're watching this video more than a few days after it was released, you should find that video top left, go and check it out. And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.